Hi, my name is Joyce Joseph, and I'm a senior financial consultant with Western Computer, and I'm also a CPA. I've been working in the AX space for the last 10 years, and I've been involved in over 15 implementations. Today, I want to share with you how to use the manual bank reconciliation functionality in Dynamics 365. So before we start, what we need to do is make sure that we have the proper setup. Once the setup's done, I would like to more or less simulate the idea that you're responsible for doing the bank rec. So the bank statement came in via online or in the mail. And now what we need to do is just more or less tick off everything on the statement. And if there are new items on the statement that have not been in Dynamics 365, we're going to need to add them in order to finalize our bank reconciliation. So the first step is I'd like to just double check that our setup is ready for bank rec. So I'm going into the cash and bank management area, going into the setup area. I'm looking for bank transaction types. Bank transaction types are very helpful because, as I mentioned, some of the areas on your bank statement that you may not be aware of is, for example, fees. So if you need to add a line for fees, then by setting up this bank transaction type, we have a default GL account number that the fees will post to when you do the bank reconciliation. How this helps everybody is that when you actually have to enter the journal entry, the system set up to use this GL account number or whatever other number is that you choose to override. Makes life very easy. Same thing, here's another example of if you have any interest income on the bank statement that you need to add. It prevents you from having to stop, go out and raise another journal entry and post that in order to have that available. And in my demonstration today, you'll see how I use that. So I've just satisfied the fact that we're good, we have everything set up. So the first thing is, you're the person who's doing the bank rec, and let's say the statement came in the mail. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the bank management workspace right here. You're going to find the bank that you're working with. Now I'm going to be working with this test one that has a balance of 7200 in Dynamics 365, but on the bank statement, the balance is 8,320. So I'm going to select this bank. I go to Reconcile and Account Reconciliation. I will give it the statement date. Today's date is fine. If I have a statement number or I use a date like November 2017, and this is where I'm going to put in the balance as per the bank statement. So the balance is 8,320. I'm going to hit the save and then I can now pull up transactions. So this is a short bank statement because there hasn't been a lot of activity. Generally what you would be doing with the account reconciliation is you would be putting check marks against anything that you see on the bank statement that also is already in Dynamics 365. But I want to show you a piece of functionality that is not very well known, but very useful. And it's called the mark check interval. So for example, I'm interested in marking check numbers 100 to 104 off because they're on the bank statement. So now by using this mark check interval, I can just type in interval 100 to 104 and hit the OK button. And you'll notice that the checks have been reconciled. That being the case, what we're left with here is although we still have this ending balance, we have an unreconciled balance of 180. Now there's two other checks here in Dynamics 365 for the 600 and 700, but they clearly haven't passed through the bank as yet, so they're not in the statement, so I will not be reconciling those. So as I said, I do have a problem that I'm still at 180, and that's why this area here, reconcile account, is not available for me to move on to. So that being the case, I look at my bank statement, and I see that I have a service fee of $250 that I need to put in. So this is where we're using the bank transaction type to make our lives easy. So we add a new line. I just hit the down arrow to add a new line. And I go from the listing of bank transaction types looking for fees. I see the fee. You'll notice that the main account got defaulted in. Now, if you don't want to use this account, as I mentioned before, you're free to use another account. I'm fine with using this account. And then 
the bank said there was a fee for $250. So I put that in. I'm just going to go off the line by just going up. And when I do that, you'll notice that the unreconciled amount is now $70. So I still have something that I need to resolve. Looking at my bank statement, I see that we actually have $70 in interest income. So again, I'm going to add a new line by just arrow key down. And I'm going to use my transaction type to see if I can find one for interest income. And there it is. Again, the system has been set up to default to a certain GL account number and you can override it. So the interest income actually happens to be $70. So once I enter that and I get off the line so it can save and recalculate, I no longer have anything that's unreconciled and I am now able to select reconcile account. So that means my bank account here is all reconciled. I select reconcile account. You'll get that the account has been reconciled. And here you can use the print to print the full bank reconciliation and a bank reconciliation summary. This is good for both your manager and the auditors when that time comes. So there you have it. We have gone through the mechanics of using manual bank reconciliation. All that's required is that you create a new account for reconciliation line and we will tick off all the items that are cleared. Make sure you try and use this mark check interval as much as possible to save you time and add the new lines as required, such as the fees or interest income or whatever other type of transaction that you need. What's happening is that a journal entry will now be created to actually book that against the bank account for you. And that's it. Thank you.